Thank you for coming along on my journey. This is the first part we get ready to paint. Ah, it's happening. First part off the donor car. All we like now is finishing up. Get the rest of it up here. Gotta head up to the front now. Get that stuff off. All right, I guess this will be the first piece we actually start on. That's the trunk off of it. I actually got the trunk off the black car. Boom. And because it is, uh, it seems to be real good and solid. The other trunk is real good and solid too, but the top of it is all where it's been exposed. So this one will be just easier to take care of. So I don't really have any holes or anything like that. Got this a little bit of surface stuff here. And I'm assuming there's probably some off down in there. It sounds pretty solid off down in there. So I'm going to take the couple pieces here that's on there off. I'm going to take the what's left of the lettering off of it. And then I'm going to squirt some uh, rust type stuff that will turn this in here and, and soak it off down in there. And let that set all off down in these corners. I'm going to pick it up and twist it around and all that stuff to where that's all protected underneath there. And then we'll get to stripping on it. This deck lid's actually in really good shape. Um, don't appear to have many things or nothing like that on it from what you can tell. So uh, we'll get this stuff off here. Put the rust inhibitor on it. Let that set. And then we'll uh, take that. I messed up and didn't get me any bags to put all these bolts in. So I don't know if you noticed that or not, but I've been putting them back. I've been putting them back where I got them from. And that way, and I go back, I don't know where they're at when I get my, uh, when I get the uh, bag to put them in. I'm going to have to get me a big socket to get that oh, lock out of there. These are bad, so I'm just going to... They're stuck in there so hard, there's not any saving them things. So I'm going to break them off. i got to get a big nut right here to get this off, so I'll be right back. I don't know what that's thinking when they put that nut on it, but I guess that's just what it had to go around it. That thing is huge. I just happened to think about something while I was taking this off. Somewhere, believe it or not, I don't throw nothing away. I have got a set of keys that went to my first car somewhere on a keychain. And I don't remember why I actually kept a set of them or not, but I have got a set. I'm about to, I'm about to look into that. I'm about to try to find them. But I've actually got a set of keys that would fit that car that I kept. And I've also got, I know where it is. Maybe that's where the key is. I've also got a, the tag um, that was on the front of that car. It says Scott 64 Spring. It's red. I've 
really know exactly where that is. Maybe the keys is in that box with that stuff too. How neat would that be if I did find the keys and just had these, uh, that was what was holding it by the way. And uh, I had it, re the, I had them keyed to fit this. Better yet, how cool would that be if these actually just fit it? Because they didn't make that many sets. You know, they didn't make that many different ones. So the chances of it fitting, I guess, might actually be, you know, realistic, I guess. Yeah, we'll have to go find that stuff. So anyway, this is the slow, boring stuff here. And like I said, these emblems, I hate it, but they are crumbling bad. So I'm just gonna pop them off. All right, got it popped off there. We'll see how this stuff works, this rust inhibitor works, because I've never used it, um, or this particular brand. I've used a brand before uh, that actually works real well, but it had got to where that it was, blah, shoot, three or four times what this stuff right here is. So we'll bounce out all the stuff inside. Not even anything kind of rolling around in there. That's a good thing. So let's see what we got. You should really glue gloves, people. So one of them things, do what I say and not what I do deals, I guess. So I'm just gonna squirt it off down in there and hopefully it'll run out. And I'll slosh it around here in a minute. Getting it all in the places there. That seems to be a, like a, a little bit thicker than the other does. <laughs> and then uh, I'll be able to see in, by tomorrow what kind of a it worked out I had a buddy of mine y'all probably watch him he's got a channel this is what he's been using Make sure that that gets all down in everywhere in there. And I think more is better on this. That's what we're gonna do. But no joke, wear you some gloves. You knew I couldn't stand it. I had to see how easy this is gonna be to come off. <laughs> This was the next day after it had set and the stuff that spilled over on the edges of it, it had dried. 
So that's the reason I was able to do that. And I didn't mention it, but that's 80 grit sandpaper that I've got on that big mud hog. Just tearing it up as rough as I can to make it as rough as it can to where the stripper will get down Free in the cracks. Stuff, stuff. Get old single stage. Actually pretty surprised. It appears that this deck lid has only ever been painted one time. And it looks like that they've went and they've primed over it. Because that's primer. That's paint. And if you look right in there, there's a little bit of sealer in there. So I'm going to say that's the original paint. Unless somebody stripped it. <clears throat> and I doubt they did. So pretty cool. One paint over on it. Now we're fixing to put the stripper to it. And put the plastic over the top of it. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so what I done here was, is I took 80 grit with my big old mud hog, and I went over it to start with to bust the paint up on it. Then after I went over it with the mud hog and got the 80 grit on it, I just took an old piece of, in my case, old piece of sandpaper and spreading it all out on it. And, uh, and then once I get it all spread out on it, I'm gonna take an old garbage bag and I'm gonna put a garbage bag over it to kind of hold it all down. And then tomorrow when I get home, then tomorrow when I get home, I'll untape this, I'll take the garbage bag off of it and boom. All right, so I got the stripper on it. And now I'm gonna take, it's already working on it, but now I'm gonna take, hey look here, the old wind up here is gonna help me out this time. And I'm gonna take this right here. Ah! And I'm gonna lay it down on top of that. We're gonna seal that off. Match it down there good and flat on it. And that way that'll seal that off and hold it down in there and keep it from just like drying right out. Because if it dries out, of course it's not doing its job. So this will let it stay wet a little bit longer. And uh and hopefully tomorrow night when I come home, this will all be turfed loose. So we'll see. Well, I thought it leaked through there, but it didn't. So I'm mashing all that down to where it's all down on it nice and good. And we'll just have to let that simmer till tomorrow. I just happened to think about something I'm gonna start doing tonight, or actually tomorrow night, because I don't remember exactly what time I got out here. But people ask all the time, well, how long did that take? Well, starting tomorrow night, from this point on in my project, I'm gonna start writing down how many hours that I have actually physically worked on the car. So we'll see. Anybody wanna take a guess how many hours it's gonna take me to finish this dude up? It's going to take several. <laughs> we'll see how many it takes starting tomorrow. If you've never tried the old plastic bag trip, you should. You won't believe how much better it works. <coughs> All right, me and the boys come out here to see what we got. Oh, the wind's blowed it. Ooh, but look at that. Heck yeah. How about that? Did that work or what? Shazam! Look at that. Wow. Man, that worked really good. Look there. There we go. Clean that off. Put that in a garbage. And uh, rinse that thing off. It'll be ready to take to work to do the inside, sand it down, and put some primer on it. 
I'm excited. It's actually happening. Check it out. It appears, I'd have to do a little bit of research, but it appears that this thing has probably got the original paint on it like I had thought. They just got the one, uh, the primer on it, the old rigged uh, oxide primer, and the black, and that's it. And uh, and then check this out. Hey, and if you notice, I tried to widen my view video up here a little bit where you wasn't just being, you know, tunnel visioned on what I was doing here. But, and another thing, check it out. Not the first place of filler in that whole hood. I think that might be the original paint on this thing. So, man, that's a good deck lid. I said hood. I'm just tore up here. But anyways, the deck lid on this thing is super nice. I'm really tickled with this. Can't wait to get the rest of the way off here. Now just give it a good bath and the rest of it to be stripped off by hand. All right, so I got the water hose out here after it. The water is supposed to be neutralizing the stripper that I put on it. And that way I can get it cleaned off for when I put it in the truck to take it to work tomorrow. A little bit slow at work, so they'll let me do this at lunch. Be another lunchtime project. Like I said, I still think I may end up calling this project, calling this car lunchtime when I get done with it. So... Let me know what you think about that. So we got all this top part off. Let me roll it over and I'll get the bottom part. Now on this side, the other side I had the stripper on it and this side I had the, uh, uh, the rust inhibitor stuff on it that I used. So you gotta clean it off really, really good. That's part of it, you gotta, the water neutralizes it also. And like I said, the underside of it, probably going to use a machine to strip it down because I don't want to get all that stripper off down in the corners and the gaps and all that stuff. I don't really like using it on the top, but at least on the top, it's not going to get all down in everything. So, doesn't look like we're gotten just a whole lot of craziness squirting out of that thing, does it? I've been squirting that up and we'll have it ready. So I started out with 80 grit on my little six inch mud hog and knocked the top of that off. There wasn't hardly any paint left to take off anyways. The little section here where I've got it in this fast motion here and everything probably took me somewhere 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, most of my lunch break there to get all that right there off the top of that thing. So you got to kind of go slow and not push a lot on it, and you for sure don't want to get it hot. And, uh, but it all come off there really good. I'm really tickled with it so far. So this will give you an idea of how long it really took me to do the rest of it there when it's in the fast motion. Uh, just in the back of this thing right here, it's a slow go. Um, and you can't get in a hurry on this stuff anyways. So this is lunch break number two. So I did three nights at home for a few hours, and then this is lunch break number two, finishing the underside of it up. That's coming right off there. It's never been painted under here. That's all the original stuff. It's just got the black and the primer on it. So, I like finishing time.
All right, so this is how come I didn't prime the bottom part of it. I was just trying to get everything that was exposed ready on it. So I took me a little punch tool and a little hammer and pecked around on it. And surprisingly, well, not really, but uh, it pecked through there a few places. I'm gonna take the welder and weld them up after I get through cleaning them all out and everything. But you'll see there, what well, looked like a little bitty place there. By the time I pecked it, it's still a little place, but I'm gonna blow all that out real good and uh, weld it up. At I said at the beginning of this thing, when we were, I got all the paint stripped off of it, initially didn't really see any places in it. But once you get sanding on that thing and moving around on it and pecking around on it, I for sure didn't want any issues after it went through all the trouble of priming and painting and all that stuff like that. So I pecked around on it pretty hard, and I did find a few. So welded those things up, no big deal. Found more on the inside than I did the outside, but still nothing major. Still really happy with how solid this deck lid is and when you get thinking about it all these body panels are 50 plus years old i mean if i bought a bunch of aftermarket junk i'd have to be beating and banging just to try to make it fit at least this way i'm saving the original stuff and all i'm doing is just doing the repairs on it i'm still i'm still headed that way can you believe that this one little place you see right there on the back of it was the only dent in the entire deck lid? Didn't do anything to any of the flat places. Whoops, I got this section out of order. Good thing I can fix a car. All right, pretty happy with how this thing's turned out so far. I got a few places that I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna weld those up. And I gotta bring my little sandblaster in and sandblast this down in here because the wire brush and stuff's not gonna get it. But everything else, Everything else is cleaned up pretty good. If you're wondering, I've probably got four plus hours in just the underneath of it, not counting the top of it. We're fixing a roller over and take care of the other side. Took the stud gun and popped that little den out right there. Um, no big deal. That way there's no holes or anything in it. I mean, old school back in the day, if they would have done that right there, they would have drilled a hole in it and used no Morgan knocker and pulled that thing out. And I'll have to say, that's how I learned how to do it. But now we got more modern stuff to do that. So no more holes in it, just pecked around on it. Just take a very little bit of putty to fix it. All right, that was the only dent I felt in the whole entire deck lid. And if you notice, just a teeny little bit, probably even when I prime it, it block right out. May have to put it worst case scenario, just a teeny tad of, of putty on it. So now we just got a 180 the whole deck lid down. Put a little edge primer on it, and the top side will be ready. This time I used the 8 inch mud hog with some 180 on it. The bigger, longer, flatter, the better it'll be. I'm absolutely tickled to death of how well this part has come out. I mean, look how shiny and smooth that is. I could not believe how straight this deck lid actually really is. It's crazy. You're not going to believe it when you see some primer on it here in a minute. <coughs> Getting real now, folks. And we start putting stuff on it. That's when you know you're getting somewhere. I think this deck lid is crazy straight. Other than that one place you see me big little dolly on, I think it's crazy straight. Nothing to it. All I like is finishing. Because I am for sure started. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the reflection of the fluorescent light bulbs, just how straight that light is reflecting. I would say that's not too bad for the very first coat of primer. No, no, no filler, no body work, no nothing. Had a little, little place right here that seemed like a little outy. I took the hammer and kind of picked it down in between the first coat and the second coat, because I'm sure I'll block this and, and do that again. Um, again, didn't do this back here because I want to take an tack these places right here on it but i just wanted to get something over that right there because all this moisture and everything get it covered up 
probably got four or five times as much time under, for the underneath as I did the top of it. But hey, anybody can make the flat part slick. Got all the bottom of it done, ready to reprime it all. Well, got all the little places welded up. Now I just gotta smooth that out there with the DA a little bit, prime it and put just a tiny little bit of filler on it. And that thing will just deck it'll be ready to paint. A block is your friend, and we for sure want this thing to be straight. Okay, where I primed this yesterday, just to keep it from getting over it, and I ground all these spots down, I showed you another one. I'm just gonna go ahead and block this thing down all the way from one end to the other. Take the biggest block you got. I got a bigger one than this when I do it to the end of it. And all I'm gonna do is, is I'm knocking all this down to make sure that I don't have anything bad. And if you look, just a little few places, that'll block right out of that thing. And then I'm gonna prime this thing and I'll put it up in the done pile until I get the rest of them done. And sometime today, I'll have a deck lid ready to paint. Hard to do this hand spray. Yeah. A week of lunches, plus what I worked on it at the house. Now I gotta just go back and fix the places. I'm gonna put the etch primer on it first, and then I'll go back and smooth everything up and, and do the other side. I'm gonna put it up right now, and then when I start fitting the body panels on there is when I'm gonna start doing the major body work. Um, like I said, just made sure these are gonna be what I wanted to use, and they are, so we're gonna roll her over and fix the other, prime the other side. Oh, the door's on my air hose. All right, here we go. It is really hard to spray in and video this too. So I'm trying. Like I said, this thing, I'm just uh, getting it covered up. This is where we're ready to bolt it together, do the final fit and body work once I get the rest of the car drilled. One piece ready to wait on the car. Again, this deck lid is just crazy straight. Now to put it up in the loft in the barn and let it wait on its other friends. Thanks again for watching my channel. I'm trying to get better on this editing.